Hi guys, Colin here. One thing I do regularly while making these videos is making up a guitar cabinet. There are a few different ways that you can do this, but I'm going to show you my method today. Today we're going to learn about different types of microphones, uh, different placements in front of the speaker, and the secrecy of dual miking. So let's get started. The first microphone we're going to look at today is the Shure FM57. This is your industry standard dynamic microphone for miking up guitar cabinets. We close mic with this, so usually getting it within a few inches of the speaker grill. Dynamic microphones like this will give you a very strong sound. They won't pick up all of the subtleties of the sound, but they will give you a very strong frequency response. The sound that they produce is also significantly changed by their placement in front of the speaker. Microphones like this Rode NT2A are condenser microphones. These require power to work, so you need a desk with phantom power for these. These can be used in all sorts of applications. They're particularly good for recording vocals because they pick up a lot of the subtleties and nuance of the sound. They're very sensitive as well, so you'll be able to pick up a lot of quiet noises around about you. When you're recording guitar with these, you're going to get a more uh, roomy, natural sound. The sounds you'd get when you're sitting in the room, but it's not going to be as powerful and punchy as your dynamic microphones. These microphones are best used with a shock cradle and a pop shield. The pop shield isn't necessary for guitar, but it's essential for recording vocals. The shock cradle is exceedingly important. These microphones will pick up all sorts of vibrations from the floor. So if the microphone was attached straight to the microphone stand, it would pick up any vibrations going around in the room. So having an internal cradle attached to an external one with elastic means that any vibrations from the outside are not affecting the microphone inside. Now I'm going to show you some placements of microphones, starting with the dynamic mic. So the placement of your dynamic microphone is very important. Here, I've got my Marshall 1x12 combo, uh, which I use the speaker for that for recording pretty much everything I do in these videos. The yellow tape here indicates where I usually place the dynamic microphone and I usually have it about an inch away from the speaker grill. But for this purposes, I'm going to remove the grill entirely so that you see the speaker. So here's this 12 inch Celestian Hot 100 which I've got inside this cabinet here. We're going to move the dynamic mic across the speaker cone uh, from the edge through the centre to the other edge and we'll see what happens with the difference in sound. Once you've found a good position for your dynamic microphone and you've got it marked out on your cab and you've got it a couple of inches away from the speaker, it's time to move on to where you're going to put your condenser microphone. The condenser is going to pick up some more of the room atmospheric, so you want it to be a bit of a distance away from the amp. I've not got mine too far away, uh, we are talking this, it's not much, it's not even my full arm's reach. It can be as far away as you like, but this works for me having a bit of you know, space constraint here, but it's fine, it's fine, it works this way. I've also got the height of the condenser slightly above the cabinet, so that when the cabinet's pushing the sound out to the whole room, this is getting more somewhere up here rather than down at the floor. Think about this as the ear of a listener. So you could have this up at head height, that would give another aspect to the sound, but I'm trying to capture the idea of maybe playing at it with a stack where the speakers would be higher up. This combo is quite low to the floor, so it's above the combo but not too high. So now I'm going to play a little bit using these two mics and I'll show you the sound from one mic, then the sound from the other and then show them both 
together and I'll pan them out to make them sound wide like you would do in a proper mix. It's best if you plug in a good set of headphones and watch this video in HD so you can get the best possible sound quality. Your laptop speakers are shite! <laughs> So hopefully this video has given you a little insight into how to make up a guitar cabinet. I'm not an expert at this and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people saying YOU DID THAT WRONG! But this is the way I do it and it works for me. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Any hints or tips for me you can put in the comments section or let me know anything you want down in there. Um, but for now, see you later.